Today I'm gonna to make a simple biochar reactor using a paint can and some iron pipe. Ni hao, vanakam, kioria. Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts. You may have seen my J-Tube rocket stove biochar reactor, and it isn't exactly simple. Today I wanted to make a much simpler biochar reactor that will make the creation of biochar accessible to almost everyone. At least everyone with a rocket stove. The basic setup here is going to be using a paint can as our biochar chamber and then we're going to put a flange or in the top which will become the bottom and then that's going to be the gas tube that's going to be going back down into the rocket stove. We're going to put a smaller extension up into our paint can to receive the gas. And as an optional step I'm going to be adding some mineral wool to the outside of the can to add some insulation to the process which is just going to make it that much more efficient. The first step is going to be to mark and drill a hole in the center of the lid to accept the flange and allow the pipe through. And now I'm simply going to attach the flange with some self-tapping screws. I'm making the lid the bottom because most likely this thing's gonna burn out after several batches and I'm gonna need to replace the lid. The lid will be the part that takes the most heat, and so it's going to go first. That's also why I'm not using adhesive to attach this. Alright, that's snug enough that it's going to not let a lot of gas out around the edges, but not a perfect seal. But that's okay, we're not going for perfect here. Now I'm gonna thread the longer pipe in. And then I'm gonna thread the smaller pipe in from the top. My thought with the inside pipe here was that the wood gas is gonna be generating throughout the mass and I wanted to be able to have that output point up in the middle there versus right down at the bottom. It may or may not make that much of a difference, but I kind of wanted to give it a try. You know how this channel works. Experimentation is the rule. And my long section of pipe that's going to be extending down into the rocket stove is designed to get that wood gas as far down into the rocket stove as possible where the hottest heat is so it can be burned as fuel. So this pipe could obviously be adjusted based on the particular size of the rocket stove you're using. So if you're not going to do the insulation step, this is as far as you need to go. Fill the can with wood chips, put the lid in, and then invert it on top of your rocket stove. But I'm actually going to add a layer of insulation outside the can to make the process more efficient. I'm going to cover my layer of mineral insulation with another paint can and it's a little bit nasty. I've actually already cut the bottom out of it. To prep my paint can, I'm going to cut out the lid rim using my grinder. And then I'm gonna cut the cylinder open. These edges are gonna need just a little cleanup. And now so it looks a little nicer, I'm gonna give it a coat of some high temperature spray paint. When I cover the mineral wool, there's gonna be a little bit of a gap. So I'm gonna cut a small piece of scrap sheet metal to go in that gap. I 
a reminder that I'm, when I'm working with mineral wool, I'm wearing gloves and a mask, or in this case, a respirator. Before it's treated, the fibers will release from this mineral wool, so they are not something that you want in your lungs or in your skin. So I've got some scrap mineral wool left over from the original biochar creator project. So I'm gonna see if I have enough to insulate this paint can. I may have to do it in pieces. Before I can wrap the insulation, I need to cut off the handle with the grinder. I'm gonna hold the mineral wool in with the second paint can. I also realized here that I'm gonna need a bigger piece of scrap to cover that gap. I'm gonna smooth these cut edges real quick so they don't cut me later. Now I'm gonna hit it with some paint. I'm gonna set this in the sun so it'll dry faster. I'm gonna clean up these small scraps of the mineral wool with some painter's tape just so it gets thrown away safely. Better safe than lung cancer. I'm gonna hold this in place temporarily with some twine, and then I'm gonna fill in the gaps with my extra pieces of mineral wool. Trains here. I'm gonna restuff this a little bit. Got a little unruly. Let's check the other side. A bit of a gap here. Now I'm gonna hit the exposed areas of the mineral wool with some rigidizer. I'm gonna apply it with a foam brush. You can also use a spray bottle, but for this particular application, this foam brush is gonna be perfect. The rigidizer also locks down the fiber so it's no longer an airborne hazard. I'm just wetting down the surface, making sure there's enough to soak in maybe you know an eighth or a quarter of an inch. All right, that ought to do it. All right, I've let the rigidizer dry for a couple hours, and let's load this thing with some wood chips and fire it up. Or fire up the rocket stove, that is. All right, these are my dry pecan wood chips. I had these for using in my smoker, or a smoker, but I don't have one right now, so um, I'm gonna use them for this. So these have been sitting in the garage, so they are dry. I'd never be able to get the pipe in there unless I made some space for it. So I'm actually gonna use this toilet paper tube, kinda keep a spot open in the middle. All right, now we're gonna put the lid on and go fire up a rocket stove. The handle still works, even if it's a little bit cattywampus. There are lots of options here in Rocket Stove Row, but I think I'm gonna use the paint can rocket with perlite insulation, just because I think it's gonna be short enough that I can see the pipe down through it it's putting out gas so but these bolts haven't been switched out yet I need a little more clearance so I'm gonna move the grate over from the fire brick rocket stove
All right, it's fired up. Going to use a rocket booster. Get this started, a little fire starter that goes with the Rocket King, but it works for any fire lighting. I'm gonna go real time with this section just because I want you to see how long it takes to get one of these going. Normally I speed things up, but sometimes there's value in seeing it as it actually plays out. Gonna take a second for this draft to start pulling back. There it goes. Start to push the fire to the back too. It's about as large as I go with rocket stove fuel. I'm gonna let, let that catch a little bit. You can take a look up and see the, we got smoke coming out. The one concern I have about this particular stove is do I have enough um, fire volume, if you will, to get this thing heated up? We'll just have to wait and see. And I can't actually see the bottom of the pipe either. So what I'll probably do is once we get this going, I'll, with my welding gloves, I'll flip it over and see if we can't get the smoke coming out the top to light. Flames reaching the top now. Still pretty smoky out the top, not sure if that's, I don't think that's wood gas yet. Maybe just airflow issues, but I've got a lot of fire. I think there are some airflow issues here. It just isn't enough fire volume through the riser. The stove is a little bit smoky. All right, let's flip this over and see if we can't see any wood gas production. Some good heat to the bottom of the can right now. Let me keep this fire going like that. It's 
So we are getting a little wood gas production there. The question is, is it enough to light? I think it needs to be a little bit thicker before it's gonna light. But that does mean that the material inside the can is charring. It produces much more smoke when it's got good fire to the bottom like that. As soon as I let that fire die down, the smoke production slows down. Let me keep this fire going. So we're charring, but I don't know if I can get that to light. I don't think there's enough pressure, enough gas, enough concentration yet. Although if our wood gas tube was down in the fire, it would probably be burning that up. But hey, let me try. Just as I thought. I like that burn. All right, so I'm gonna let this burn for maybe another 10 minutes. Then I'll let it cool down and open it up, see how much biochar we've got. The beauty of a retort or reburn system like this is that the wood gas produced during the pyrolysis or biochar creation process can be used as fuel. So in other words, you're not wasting that biogas, you're using it. I'm gonna pull this off and let it cool. Still making some gas. I think I'm gonna let that stop before I open it. Alright, let's open it up. I usually have some water on hand to quench any coals. As soon as this thing gets oxygen, it's gonna want to go back to coal. So, yeah, not complete. My tube isn't even burned up. Dump it out and get a closer look. Maybe 20%. Let's see if what is charred is actually charred all the way through. Okay, well that's good. At least the stuff that is charred is charred all the way through. So you know on this channel I show you when stuff works and I show you when stuff doesn't work. But I'm not giving up on this yet. I, I'm actually going to try it on one of the bigger rocket stoves in another video. The main reason I, I think it just wasn't getting enough airflow, enough heat concentrated right at the bottom. So I learned about biochar from watching a video from Living Web Farms. One thing that they mention is that with wood chips, if it's packed too tight, the airflow can't happen and it insulates itself and you don't get complete pyrolysis. So that may be what's happening here. But I also think that even when the pipe was down in the top of that can, we only have a diameter of about that, a soup can. So with the pipe in it, we lost some diameter and it may just not have been enough airflow, enough heat concentration so it's not necessarily a failure, it's iteration. A reminder to tell me how to say hello in your language and I'll add it in my next video. Special thanks to my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you think I've added value, then consider joining me over on Patreon. In fact, I'm about to load a series of five short videos about things that happen here in the backyard on a day-to-day -day basis. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. And subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video almost every Friday.